Dark Gengar writes, Hi, how about doing a video on the Doxa Sub 300D? Let's dive in. Designer Notes, Subject 29. What subject would you like us to discuss next? Subscribe and comment to let us know. Doxa is a brand that we cannot say is a household name. Well, not to the general public, that is. But to a modestly informed viewer like you, you may have already heard of Doxa in some shape or form. Here's why many consider Doxa as the true diverse dive watch. Okay, of course, you don't have to go to a dive school or secure a license or something just to wear this watch. If you already have such a license and has been enjoying what the sea has to offer, then please do not hesitate to buy a Doxa 300T and casually remind Doxa along the way that our humble channel coerced you to do it. If you're still not convinced or need more information, then please let us ramble on. Doxa has been around for 130 years and has been specializing in dive watches in the last six decades. If you haven't heard of Doxa yet, maybe the name Jacques Cousteau may ring a bell. This famous scientist slash explorer slash filmmaker slash author also happens to invent the scuba gear called Aqualung. The Aqualung did become a household name in the dive scene and can be seen on most dive equipments including the Doxa sub which Mr. Cousteau famously wore himself. Thus, the legend of the Doxa sub was born. The current sub 300T line is based on the 300T Conquistador back in the 60s. The current 300T though has some key notable absence from its predecessor. The Conquistador was known as the first watch with a commercially available helium escape valve. This is not included in this current line. Within the current 300 and 300T line, we can also find some noticeable differences. The 300T is a half a millimeter bigger than the sub 300, measuring at 42.5 millimeters by 44.5 millimeters respectively. The case back is expected to be screwed down with the engraved Doxa sailing boat. The case back also curves generously under the watch but is offset with a curved case that hugs the wrist better than most watches. The 300T is 120 bar or 1200 meter water resistant compared to a meager 30 bar for the sub 300. There are no drilled lugs in this one which is sorely missed from the previous versions, nor are there any screws which are only found from the higher end Doxa subs. Over the case is a sapphire crystal that is a definite upgrade to mineral crystals that older doxas were installed with. Buyers beware though, the crystal and dial altogether are smaller than is expected from dive watches. This smaller dial makes the bezel appear wider than it is and blows out the case visually. Compare this to the Submariner where the bezel is almost as wide as the case. The bracelet and bracelet options are quite decent. The bracelet is thick and chunky. The beads of rice adds comfort as it contours across your wrist. It's also a bonus that the beads of rice are actually polished, making the bracelet quite brilliant at any angle. The lug links for the Sub 300T has a slight taper that helps a bit with the already wide profile. Compare this to the 1200T, which has a non-tapering bracelet and an equally wide profile for the case, the case width is highlighted further because of the sharp contrast between the case and bracelet. The folding clasp has the Jennyfish logo, the logo of the owners of Doxa, and a diving extension that's always helpful for both wearing the watch over a wetsuit and for simply loosening up the bracelet on warmer temperatures. The crown is relatively thick with ample grips with gaps in between. This is, of course, a screw-down crown that reminds us of its water resistance. This crown is protected reasonably as it's recessed into the case itself. Expect nothing special with the movement, which is an automatic ETA 2824-2, which has a 38-hour power reserve that beats at 4 Hz. The rotor is decorated by Doxa, and that's about it. The 2824 is one of the most used movements around the world, which should make it easy enough to service when needed. Now let's talk about that bezel. 
The bezel has a unique and often imitated look. It uses not only one, but two dibrillated scales. The inner bezel has the usual minute scale, while on the outside, we have the decompression scale that's established by the US Marines. It's rather easy to read and not complicated at all. The diving scale is used to track your dive's elapsed time by setting the pit to where the minute's hand is placed before you dive. As you dive and reach your target depth, say 100 feet, you can easily read the corresponding minutes you have left before you need to decompress. In this case, it's 25 minutes. This is such a clever integration of these two scales that DOXA has become synonymous with. Also worth noting that the current models now use the English system indicated by the foot unit while the older models used the metric system which were scaled in meters. The edge grips of the bezel are positioned at the top of the bezel height. This frees up the whole bezel to be gripped by your fingers in any direction. The whole case below serves as a finger rest as you turn the bezel. This is a surprisingly functional feature in contrast with other dive watches where the case and lugs may interfere with the rotation of the bezel. Hmm, really? Okay, right. Moving on to the dial, we can clearly see distinctions between the many models of the Sub 300T. The varying names are really just colorways with various name designations. The Professional with Orange, Caribbean for Blue, Shark Hunter for Black, Diving Star for Yellow, Aquamarine for Aquamarine, and Sea Rambler for Silver. The signature minute hand is larger than anything else. This is a purely dive-related design direction, since the minute hands are most utilized for tracking time underwater more than the other hands. The second hand is somewhat hammer-shaped with its boxed-out sentence marker. For the professional version, Aquamarine and Diving Star, the hands are all blacked out along with the hour markers. But for the Caribbean and the Shark Hunter, the hands are white instead of black, while the minute hands are painted orange. The Sea Rambler combines both schemes, with blacked out hands and orange minute hands over the lighter dial. All these colorways are carefully chosen to be more legible underwater with the blacked out markers and hands over the lighter dials while the darker dials sporting the lighter markers and hands. Current doxes now use Luminova, but many previously used tritium on their dials that hold luminescence longer without the aid of sunlight. The date window is conveniently placed at the 3 o'clock position, like other dive watches. The dial is segmented in quadrants with the doxa branding on the upper left quadrant and the model designation on the lower right. This balances out the dial, leaving it somewhat uniform. This has become the signature of doxa. There are numerous notable models in the subline from DOXA, and some are extremely rare. When DOXA says it's limited, it is truly limited in quantity, unlike certain popular brands. Here's looking at you, Seiko. But the most iconic of all is the Orange Professional. It was one of the first watches in the 60s that used vibrant colors on their dials and Doxa did it not to be unique or to pop out from the crowd. They did it because it's the most legible color underwater. Like most of its features, it's all designed to be used by a diver, to be useful to the then-growing recreation. By staying true to its purpose, the Doxa Sub 300T set itself apart from the dive watch scene that not only true divers can appreciate, but also as collectors of the drier kind.